We're now moving on to non-monetary exchanges. So what exactly is a non-monetary exchange? First, to understand non-monetary, we have to understand what monetary means. Monetary assets are when an entity has cash or will receive cash in the future. The flow of the future cash, the amount and timing of the cash inflow is known. Good examples of monetary assets include things like cash, accounts receivable, and notes receivable. Non-monetary assets are everything else. All the assets which are not claims to fixed or known cash flows. Examples would include things like inventory, property plant and equipment, and equity investments in other companies. So now that we understand what a non-monetary asset is, we can better understand a non-monetary exchange. It's when one entity's non-monetary asset, liability, or services is exchanged for an other entity's with little to no monetary consideration involved. So little to no cash involved or little to no accounts receivable involved. An example would be an entity exchanging a passenger plane for an other entity's two cargo planes. The exchange must involve little to no monetary consideration, which means it should involve little to no cash or accounts receivable. What does little mean? The term little is in relation to the value of the assets being exchanged. For instance, if one entity exchanges a truck for an other entity's office equipment plus $20,000 cash, we have to determine if the $20,000 cash is considered little. To determine that, we compare the amount of cash included in the exchange to the value of the assets exchanged. So, say the truck's fair value is $45,000 and the office equipment's fair value is $25,000. Then the $20,000 cash would be considered significant because it makes up almost 50% of the fair value of the truck and almost 100% of the fair value of the equipment. The little or no monetary consideration is a matter of professional judgment, but it must be assessed against the fair value of the assets being exchanged. Now that we understand what non-monetary assets are, the main issue is how to account for the value of the assets which are received in the exchange. Going back to our example, if one entity gives up a passenger plane for two cargo planes, how should the cargo planes that we received be valued and recorded? There are two valuation alternatives when accounting for a non-monetary exchange of property, plant, and equipment. If there is commercial substance in the exchange, and I'll explain commercial substance in just a minute, then the cost of the asset received is equal to the fair value of the asset given up. So, if we're the entity giving up the one passenger plane in exchange for the two cargo planes, then the fair value of the one passenger plane is the value we would use to record the two cargo planes. Well, unless the fair value of the asset received is more reliably measured. So, in our example, if the fair value of the one passenger plane that we gave up is difficult to measure, but we have the fair value of the two cargo planes that we received, then we'll use the fair value of the two cargo planes received in order to record the two cargo planes. We always start with the fair value of the asset given up and only move to the fair value of the asset received if the fair value of the asset given up is not determinable. Let's just repeat this for emphasis. If there is commercial substance, then the cost of the asset received is always the fair value of the asset given up unless the fair value of the asset received is more reliable. We have a better measurement of the asset received. Now that we have the fair value that we're going to use to record the exchange, the difference between the carrying value of the asset given up which is of course the cost less the accumulated depreciation and the fair value used is then recognized either as a gain or a loss on the income statement. Now let's go back to commercial substance. We only use this rule if the exchange has commercial substance. What 
is commercial substance. A non-monetary transaction has commercial substance if the asset received changes the entity's cash flows, meaning that the cash flows expected from the asset received are different than the cash flows from the asset given up. How can we tell if there is a significant change in the cash flows? There are two possible indicators of commercial substance in a non-monetary transaction. Commercial substance exists if the risk, timing, or the amount of the cash flows differs before and after the exchange. For instance, the two cargo planes received may have a higher risk associated with their cash flows, or the amount of the cash flows expected may be different from the passenger plane given up. So that's one indicator of commercial substance. What's the other indicator? The present value of the after-tax cash flows from using the asset received is significantly different from the present value of the after-tax cash flows from the item given up. In other words, the value received from using the assets over time are significantly different. This is called the entity-specific value of the asset. This totally makes sense. For example, if there is no difference in the risk, timing, or amount of the revenues, but the asset received reduces operating costs by, for instance, providing economies of scale, then the present value of the cash flows from the received assets will be higher and therefore benefit the entity. One of these things must be true for the exchange to have commercial substance. If one is true, then commercial substance exists and the exchange must be reported using the fair value of the asset given up unless the fair value of the asset received is more determinable. Now, what if there is no commercial substance to the exchange? Well, wait a minute. When would the exchange have no commercial substance? Commercial substance does not exist if one of the following is true. First, when there is no commercial substance, meaning of course that the future cash flows do not change, meaning that neither the configuration or the present value of the future cash flows change. If they do not change, then there is no commercial substance. Pretty straightforward. Now, second, there is no commercial substance if the exchange was part of the ordinary business transaction made to ensure a sale to a customer. For example, if there is an exchange of inventory for sale for other inventory for sale in order to help make a sale, then there is no change in the economic position and therefore there is no commercial substance. So there's no commercial substance if the exchange was part of the ordinary business transaction made to ensure a sale. Third, there is no commercial substance if both the asset given up and the asset received don't have a fair value. The fair value can't be measured. In that case, since there's no fair value for either asset, the exchange is deemed to have no commercial substance. And finally, if the exchange is a distribution to the shareholders, for instance, in a restructuring, a spin-off, a liquidation, then the exchange is deemed to have no commercial substance. If there is no commercial substance, then how should the exchange be reported? If there is no commercial substance in the exchange, then the cost of the asset received is equal to the carrying value of the asset given up. Remember that the carrying value is equal to the original cost of the asset given up less its related accumulated depreciation. So in this case, the cost of the asset received, the two cargo planes, are going to be equal to the carrying value of the asset given up, which is the one passenger plane. No gain is ever recognized if there's no commercial substance. However, if the fair value of the asset received is less than the carrying value of the asset given up, then we have to report a loss on the income statement. This is known as the fair value cap. When an asset is received, it can't be recognized for more than its own fair value. Since we're using the carrying value of the asset given up, the carrying value of the passenger plane that we gave up, we have to compare it to the fair value of the asset received, the fair value of the two cargo planes. Why do we do this? 
because we have to ensure that the carrying value used to report the two cargo planes is not greater than the actual fair value of the two cargo planes. We can't record the two cargo planes for more than their fair value. All right, that's it for non-monetary exchanges. Let's just summarize the concepts. If there is commercial substance to a non-monetary transaction, we report the asset received at the fair value of the asset given up, unless the fair value of the asset received is more reliable. If there is no commercial substance to a non-monetary transaction, we record the asset received at the carrying value of the asset given up, but we have to ensure that the carrying value is less than the fair value of the asset received. If it is not, then we report a loss on the income statement. I know this all sounds confusing, but I'll provide examples in separate video so that you can better understand the application of these standards to non-monetary exchanges.